Welcome to River Bend Talon on WBGZ. Brought to you by the Halpin Music Company. That's right, another River Bend Talent brought to you by the Halpin Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Boris of uh, Town Club. And uh, the Sea Santy sing along is not canceled tonight, always underway down at Morrison's Irish Pub, but a, a bunch of cancellations uh, on the list tonight, and uh, we'll get to those as we go along. And uh, you know what, Pigpen? My yeah. skin is turning to paper, my hair is wearing thin. I got to find more time to fix the mess that I'm in. The clock has turned against me time and time again. This is the moment where everything must begin. I'm getting so old. I could really use a friend, and I'm glad and lucky to have our friends don't get dead <laughs> in the studio. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank Thank you. And, uh, that that's the awesome. lyrics to their song, <laughs> Paper Thin. So, and yeah, we've yeah, all yeah. been there. Oh, Everyone it holds the true, right? Mm. Oh, it does indeed. And that was a great <laughs> intro. That was wonderful, man. I'm not sure it'll ever get any better than that. It's uh, not a great intro. It's a great song it's a great by song. Paper Thin. I'm yeah. just repeating what yeah, I read. Right on, great man. song by Don't Get Dead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I said paper thin, didn't I? That's the name. That's right. That's the song. Right. You call it whatever you want, man. You you called it out. Stone it was good. Late for dinner. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, right on, man. So I will. Uh, for, for those of you out in Radio Land who are like, well, who is it they got on? I don't even know. It's a it is a band called Don't Get Dead. To my direct right, we've got Jared uh, Umfried. He's been on before. The been hideous gentleman. Uh, is that microphone on? Lean in just a little bit, maybe. Happy to be back. Yeah, all the buttons are pushed, but you know what that uh, means here. Can't quite. Is it working? I don't know. Lean in a little. Is it working now? There we yeah. go. There <laughs> we go. I think you were just a little dissident. Get up on it, man. Uh, yeah. Dissident like a but, chord. Yeah, well, you know. Like a sustain. Well, a, lot, a lot of the voices in my head are dissonant, so I'm, <laughs> I'm totally used to this. <laughs> See, in this band, I drum, so I don't do any of the chord stuff, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. dissonant. Yeah. I don't even know what stuff. keys these songs are in, and I don't care. <laughs> He's the timekeeper for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, taking a different role. It is. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. That is any that project is I do, I like it to be something different. And I don't like repeating myself too often. What? I, all I do is repeat myself. I got like two brain cells work, working, you know. So. All right, in the studio, uh, don't get dead. We got Jared Unfried, the drummer, yeah. also owner of Alton Music Exchange and a member of the Hideous Gentleman. Shameless. Take it all. Take, Take it. it all. Shameless gentleman, hideous gentleman, whatever. Yeah. No, you got it right. I'm just, I'll just happily be shameless about the, the, the plug. Self, the shameless the self plug. promotion. I'll yeah, take all the plugs man. I can get. We got, got Chris Hinkle. Chris Hinkle is uh, off mic. He's uh, just going to hang out tonight. He's a guitarist. That's right. What's and, up, Chris? And, and odor of uh, Pisaw Body Art. Mm-hmm. That's uh, right. The, the tattoo shop right there at the corner of Henry and Broadway. There you rock go. and roll corner right there, man. That's it is rock and roll. The, that is the arts district right there, mm-hmm. from you know Jacoby and uh, the, the the lighthouse and on down to the conservatory. Yeah, I don't know if it's anyone else calls it the arts district. That's what I've been calling it. Rock and roll corner. It, rock and roll corner. I like that a lot better. Who else we got? Here? We got Jeremy Allen Stanton, lead yes. singer. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't know about names. lead, but they, they let me write and right. yell a little bit. Three names. three names. It's yeah. a z- <laughs> serial killer for sure. It's getting serious. Scott, I will, uh, I will keep front my man eyes on this what guy, it? man. Scott from Fragile Porcelain Mice calls himself a carnival barker. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, we are probably Not, cut from the same cloth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're playing here pretty soon yeah. with Kilvarez. When is that? Did that just happen? That just happened. They yeah. played uh, yeah, up in yeah, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, but um, I can't remember the name uh, of the town. Matt's from home, his place. Uh, and Loose Cobra. Are, then they're playing with 33. They are, yeah. Another reunion show. That pops. Yeah. So, uh, it would be nice to see them play a little bit more often. We'll be talking about a couple gigs you guys got coming up. One at CBGB's, of course, New York City. You guys are heading out that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the CBGB in St. Louis. And yeah, one September step September 1st, yeah. And then a September 15th show at a Red Flag. But most importantly... A recording straight out of Lighthouse Sounds from Dumb Kid Dead. Yes, sir. We're talking about that brand new. Yes, sir. But first, let's go through what's happening Thursday night here real quick uh, that hasn't got canceled. Yeah, I imagine all most of the outdoor stuff is probably, the, probably shutting for the down. Man. Next couple days. Yeah, we do have Cross the Line later at Fast Eddie's from seven to eleven. 
uh, let's see, Outlaw Opry, still doing grafting music in the wow. park, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, so so I'm, I'm going to say this to anybody who's out there and going, well, that's just crazy. A, a few years back, it was a day much like today, 100 plus degrees, and my wife wanted to go to exactly this, the Grafton's music in the park. I think Stubblefield was playing or yeah. something. And I wore a tank top and shorts and flip-flops thinking I would die, and that breeze came off that yep. river, and I was actually like... I should have wore sleeves. So it's it, exactly why I don't look at the weather forecast. Yeah. Because it, when you get out in the weather, it's not as bad as they make it sound on mm. television. And when are folks going to start realizing that it's all about fear, folks? Yeah. <laughs> they are scaring <laughs> you into buying all the groceries yeah, you can and hunkering right. down. I went Have for we a not nice been long through this? bike road ride today out in the heat, and it felt damn good. I there thought. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Breathing um, good. Yeah, man. Moving good. That's right. That's get that, nice and loose. Opens right. the lungs up that heat. Yeah. yeah. And old. I honestly believe, you know, air conditioning is, is one of the biggest reasons it feels so horrible outside. When yeah, it's all acclimation, that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, Relativity. You know, Relativity. Yeah. I stay out in it quite a bit, you I, know, with my uh, lawn job that I do. And, yeah. And uh, that's all I hear all day long is people coming out of their house going, it's so hot, how are you doing this? And I'm like... The reason I'm doing this is because it's so hot and you don't want to. So I'm loving the heat. <laughs> yeah, you know, tell honestly, them to go back yeah. inside, <laughs> man. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, also man. going on tonight, uh, Curtis Salgado. Not sure who that is, but he's doing the Wild E Theater at right. 7.30. Lazy Lester down at Pavia's Place from 7 to 10 in Granite. And Scott and Michelle already underway at Camara's Pizza in Granite City. Not familiar with that place. and It's been around for a little bit, but... Oh. Scott and Michelle are great. It's just at their house. Yeah. This past week. And it's funny because I watched a video from the guy from uh, Kamara's Pizza, and he's he's promoting their grand opening in 2027. He's like, I'm going to wait four or five years to get my business established before I even try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a well, smart move. Slow rolling. Yeah. All music has changed. Never did a grand opening. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. We you it should. Out. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> you should. Frankie and the House Shakers down at Patrick's in Granite City, already underway until 9 o'clock. Uh, Ten String Dream, maybe, at Old Terrell Brewery in Collinsville. Midwest Avenue, maybe, out at uh, Prairie Inn and Dorsey from 5.30 to 8.30. And we got the Experience Live Music Row going on every weekend down there in Belleville. So there you go. That's a Thursday night underway. Now back to Don't Get Dead. <laughs> So, uh, Which is why a lot of places have canceled. They don't want to get dead. They, well, it, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I think a, a lot of those places are just assuming no one's going to come out because everyone's sitting around saying how hot it is. But, yeah. you know, like you were bringing up the bike ride, I, the best part of my day, I got outside and watered plants in the backyard. and walk, You know, the, the time yeah. I spent outside was my favorite part of the day, even though it was hot. Yeah. yeah it was warm, but it, it felt great. Well, not everybody wants to succumb to, like, things like heat some people just don't give a damn and get out there and do what they need to do yeah. and i think people like business owners especially forget that and they freak out and they think you know nobody's going to show up but if you close the doors and really nobody shows up for, for right. sure like, yeah. you, you're, you're definitely <laughs> solidifying catch that. anything if you're uh not fishing rods on the water that's right man. The time. that's right that's right man. But, hey. yeah and it's been summer for many many years it has it keeps happening doesn't it <laughs> it does it's <laughs> right. the weirdest damn thing <laughs> Every year. We keep getting softer and softer. It's an annual thing, right? <laughs> yeah. It seems like it happens about this time every year. Yeah, it's or weird. It yeah, it goes know. on through September. And, and, and then not yeah. long after, the pumpkin spice monster takes over and just... <sighs> oh, yeah, Instagram favorite. <laughs> What's your vape flavor? Pumpkin spice, pumpkin of course. Spice. It's, a, it's that time of the year. <laughs> <Every year. laughs> We're not there yet. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. assuming the dispensaries are all going to have pumpkin spice weed this oh, year. I'm sure. yeah. Yeah. I won't go outside unless there's pumpkins in October. <laughs> Much like people with the heat, I refuse. Uh, the, the, gore, Bring up the pumpkins. The gourds are safe till Thanksgiving. Yeah, you can live one more month. That's right. <laughs> uh, so I bet go. the Giants didn't complain about heat. 
Uh, Back when they were building Star Forts. Yeah, like Nephilim. <laughs> oh, wait. That's your first song on your EP. Oh, Giants. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I slipped right, off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was going to be Nephilim, but I didn't want to make it too biblical or crazy, you know? It's <laughs> actually the second name of that song. Yeah, that okay. was a rename. That was yeah. a rename. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it had a different name before. Yeah. yeah. So, was, five songs on the EP, I guess you call it still, was yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where the line is. I'm pretty sure five songs is an EP. I had, I, Call six songs an EP myself. But, okay, that's a big question. I, I mean, where, where is the songs. line drawn? I mean, I, what? I mean, back I in the record days. Yeah, I don't want to age myself, but like I didn't grow up with records. It wasn't a thing. It was CDs. Um, now it's so making much, a, it's you making had a so comeback. much time on each side of right. that vinyl. But but here's the thing. I think that line isn't drawn in the sand over how many tracks as much as just time it's duration i've got albums that one side is just one song right and it just goes on for 23 minutes yeah (laughs) i mean we printed our um like just for ourselves we printed our uh our album Mm -hmm. to vinyl and it's just the five songs three on one and two on the other but it's a good quality cut it's nice and deep it's heavy vinyl you know it's quality so um and 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 vinyls like that they would call them the eps not the lps yeah uh, if they didn't quite fill up the the entirety of yeah so you've got your single you got your ep which is extended play and your lp which is long play yeah right so ours was just not a single so it's an ep what about the 78s man what about let's not forget the 78s man (laughs) (laughs) you had to bring them up man you had to bring them up Mm. Mm. yeah so yeah we uh actually uh we're sort of excited to get back in the studio again um, you know, we're well on our way to having the material for that. Uh, right now, we're just really focused on sharpening the sword for the, for the shows coming up. Mm-hmm. We don't want to really mix those two, you know, uh, focus on one thing at a time, make sure the main thing's the main thing. Yeah, right it's on. hard to know when to call a season and say, okay, now it's time to get back into the drawing board and, and writing new stuff and getting back in the studio. Because to me, it's one or the other. It's like you're either in show mode or you're in write mode. And it's just different because you don't tend to focus on all the songs you play live. Yeah. You, know, you can easily spend two, three hours on one one song trying to get something happening. Yeah, we've it. done that. <laughs> yeah. We've definitely done yeah. that. This is but. a slow this is a we this is a slower operating group that I'm used to. And in ways it's awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean you've been in tons yeah. of bands. Some bands just these are simple songs and it goes real quick. And then there's this one, this particular band where I mean these are complex songs i'm a novice drummer you know i try to figure it out i'm like the third best drummer in the band so, <laughs> so you know, for it's all, such a great line <laughs> so, i like it yeah so when everybody out there who hears uh, the new record and uh, their drummers don't don't be too mean to me i'm a guitar player and actually uh it, yeah. was, it was a jason from uh bruiser queen and we played a gig with him he was in uh, another band at the time and he goes you're drunk, or you're a guitar player, aren't you? And I was just like, he's like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. He's like, but you're a guitar player. And he's like, I was like, absolutely, yeah, I yeah. am. He's like, I could tell. I yeah. could tell by the way you strum your drum set. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, Jason beats the hell out of his. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely he's a, he's a difference. He's a fantastic drummer. Yeah, he is. A lot of fun to play with uh, that guy. A lot of fun. And, and you yeah. know, drums is one of those things. It's so much fun to play. But like, I, I, I you know, I got a drum set, and I. Everybody else plays my drum set more than me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I bought the I, I bought the drum set and everybody because I just, I'm not that good, I guess. So I don't get a chance well, it, to play my it's own drum awesome. set. I mean, it, it's the it's the thing. It's I mean, rhythms and beats are older than notes. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, if, if we have anything instinctually music about us, it's the rhythm. You know. Yeah. Not that everybody has natural rhythm. I don't. I mean, I was, you know. I'm, no, but you look I've at, got rhythm. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I, when yeah. I was a kid, I didn't have it naturally. <laughs> but being around bands for 20 years, yeah. and there was always a drum kit there. Yeah. And when no one's around, you're like, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's something I about that it. pulse or that vibration that comes off a drum, mm-hmm. even if it's just a single, like, hand drum, you know. like yeah. It doesn't matter. There's something about it that just gets in you and that it can almost put you in a trance of, of mm-hmm. sorts you know Absolutely. Uh, so when i first i, I grew up uh, i spent some years living with a drummer as a roommate uh scott robertson is a great drummer from around here and uh back in the the 80s we shared a, a bedroom for a while so like the drum sets in the bed like i heard that and then, <laughs> I, then I was a light guy for his band where you, you learned to move the lights with the music mm-hmm. but i really had never tried to play drums 
until like I, I suddenly I was found my scene. I mean, I'd been around drum kits. You sit down right. and try to have fun, but you don't know what you're doing. But I tried to start start trying hand drums, and and I actually in the '90s I I had these drum circles over at uh, on Sundays over on Del Mar. If I wasn't like out following the Grateful Dead around, if I was in town, yeah. like my friends from Coke, yeah, we would all meet there. And this guy that, that I, I talked to, the guys who own the local drum store, and they would bring down some extra drums for us, and they'd hang out. And I remember one of them looked at me and he goes, "You got to stop thinking. Every time you pay attention and start watching what everyone's doing, you are not." That's right. You lose it. That's right. If you just close your eyes and and, and, and feel it, you get it. And I that was the greatest piece of advice yeah. I had ever got is quit overthinking it. So I tell you just what, that can be it. carried over into a lot more than just playing the drum. Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. Well, all of life. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man. Absolutely. Yeah, turn music. the brain off and just go. <laughs> right. right. I be, I never thought again since then about anything that's right ever <laughs> well, there's probably a fine balance there but hey you know well, I was, uh, remember to breathe that's remember right breathe. man <laughs> <laughs> so this band don't get dead first show only about a year ago june 5th yeah, 2022 but something tells me all you guys have been in bands before yeah we slow rolled this man we've really been patient uh we've it's been a slow churn but a very deliberate one foot in front of the other and uh, we made that decision early on that we weren't going to rush it. Mm-hmm. And everybody in the band is, is yes, has been in other bands. Uh, but more than that, I think there's a maturity level and a sort of an acceptance that we're not going to force anything. Mm-hmm. So tell us, Jeremy Allen Stanton, what bands have you been in? Um, uh, the Divine March and okay. Elbow Through Hammer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hanging out with Josh, Josh Crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did vocals gotcha. in both of those bands okay. for a while. And uh, recently exited the Divine March. Uh, I've got some other things going on in my life that I want to focus on. And uh, I wanted to commit myself more to Don't Get Dead. Uh, it just, uh, you know, it was, a, it was just a gut feeling. It was time. And I know, you know, Joshua's got that band in good hands and, you know, definitely not a rookie by any means he knows what he's doing so <laughs> right yeah so uh but that's not the first band you've been in like how long have you been doing this no i've been writing my i've been writing uh on my own since childhood right um but i got on stage for the first time with joshua and elbow through hammer okay uh, at an event my old company uh, barrel brands was hosting in collinsville that was in like uh, 2018, I think. Okay. That's the first time I met you. Was it? Love at first sight. Awesome on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got it the was awesome. a coming out party of sorts for what I knew I had in me, but uh, I never had the, the gumption or like the, the, I'll just call it, I'll just throw it out there, the self worth to really think that I could do it. Now, he mentioned three drummers in the band. Do you play an instrument? Uh, I play guitar. Okay. How yeah, long have you been doing great. that? Not great. Uh, picked up the bass about two years ago and picked okay. up the guitar within the last year. All right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, what I write for myself is totally different than Don't Get Dead. It's it's way more Americana, campfire, and, and country kind of stuff. about everybody that, you know, we're not all necessarily sitting and listening to the music that we make. Right. Other bands that make music like that. I mean, I mean we really do all come from vastly different styles. Totally, yeah. Yeah, all like of us. what yeah. I what I do on stage and and what I'm into is more of a, akin to like like '90s like the Jesus Lizard or like Dazzling Kilman like noise rock from back okay. in the day. Yeah, I had read somewhere where Stoner slash noise rock Thin Lizzy and Jesus Lizard had a baby and left <laughs> it with caffeine and sharp objects while wolves <laughs> raised it. Yes, sir. It, yeah, they, that's, what they say. yeah <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. I mean, it's chaotic yeah. and a little wild, but it's it always... It's chaotic, but it's deliberately so, or the best we can handle the reins. I mean, because it does get out of control. I mean, there is, it is it can be pretty raunchous. Stuff. Right. So can we talk about the guys who are not here? And that includes Chris, because he's off mic. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can definitely talk uh, about Chris. Or he can lean in really and, and just... This is really brain kind of his baby really okay I mean, really yeah is. i'd like to know you know some history from chris was he in bands you know is is there somebody that might ring a bell with us that we've seen chris before well, you know that kind of thing chris, uh, he was from different areas uh, columbus ohio he spent a lot of time in bands up that way i don't know all the names of all the bands uh, yeah chris really the, the greatest thing about chris <laughs> is uh he, he's one of those guys that is in the flow so that place where you look at him and you're like, man, that guy is not really doing much, but it's like a Zen place. Like, you know, we've talked on about stage, it before. Yeah, His Zen on place stage. is on stage. Nice. And, and that's like, what it means. Like, moving on. If everybody else is 
jumping around, acting like many of he Chris doesn't, is. Yeah, he's in his zone. He's man. the statue. He's he right there. And like, there's definitely a feeling of Chris being a, um, and I mean this in a very positive way, but an anchor for us. Okay. He and Jared both allow Brad and Steve and I to just sort of go crazy. And they're always there doing what they need to be doing, and it allows us to do what we want to do. Right. It yeah. gives you the freedom to move around because you know that that pulse, that anchor is always there to all jump of back it. to. Yeah. All of it. And with him playing baritone guitar, it's right there with the rhythm section. You know, it's and, right there with the bass and the drums. So. And, and for those of you out there in Radio Land, you're like, well, if Chris is there, why isn't he talking for himself? You got to understand, Chris is the eye candy of this group. Yeah. He's the looker. He's he's not yeah. here to be heard. He's here to be seen. Yeah. And if you watch the video, you'll be like, oh, I get it, man. He's I trying to it. draw him into the microphone. I That's am. I am. He's a beautiful man. Defend yourself, Chris, anytime you're ready, buddy. It's like a kid being raised in the 1970s. You know, you're meant to be seen, not heard. Right. Right. Yeah. How long you been playing, Chris? At least give us that. Uh, I started in bands when I was uh, 19, and then I kind of put it down at the age of probably 23, 24. And then I basically met Jared and uh, basically kind of went back to it. And I changed from being a bass player to playing guitar. So guitar is, it's not new, new to me, but uh, I'm definitely not a seasoned or a veteran guitar player by any means. Okay. I just, yeah. I just uh, play what I can play, and I hope that everybody kind of digs it and we can build on it, and that's kind of... Beautiful. See, we got it all figured out, Chris. You love what you do with the guitar. That's right. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's all that matters. And it comes to... That's one of the beautiful things about this group is people... We do what we know that we can do. We accept it, and we move on. Yeah. There's no force in it. There's no, like, hey, you didn't do it the way I wanted it to. It's like, oh, thanks for adding your piece. Mm -hmm. Next. You know, I think that's yeah. super important I, in bands. You can't, I mean, you can't have a dictator dedicating or dictating everything that happens. You, it really, you got to accept and, and love everybody in the group, what they do and what they bring to the table, it, it, perfect I mean, or not. I was going to say, if, if there, there are band leaders or whatever that do that, where it's like, hey, you, oh, he's Frank Zappa writing out every note, do the, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, but, yeah. but, but when it comes down to it to me i've said that for years i don't do this because i think i'm good at it i don't play any instrument because i think i'm good or sing because i do this because it's fun, fun this, this is a it. this is a blast to getting together with people yeah. sm- drinking and smoking and just making music mm-hmm. yeah, it's the bee's knees to me what's I, great you know, about that is everyone has a different way of doing it and that's what's yeah. really cool about music yeah. theory you don't yeah. have to be one way or the other you can be a total geek and learn every single thing there is to know about music, and that's fun to that person. That's right. You know, so and there's no right or wrong. It's right. Like, oh, this is better than that. You know, I see a lot of in comparisons or, or, or top ten lists or top hundred lists, and it's like, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Either I like it or I don't. I don't need you to tell me that. There's something <laughs> really interesting about this group too that I've noticed uh, 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 that is different than the other bands that I've been in, at least, is that and musicians and artists will understand what I'm saying here. When that lightning hits. When that lightning hits you in that moment of creation, you don't, at least in my experience, you don't want to force that and try to add on to it. What I'm learning, what I'm seeing in us is it hits and then we reverse engineer it. We sort of unpackage it and we go, okay, what got us to that? And let's see how we can get back to it as opposed to like, oh, well, now where are we going to go? Because that, like, that'll get you stuck. If something really brilliant hits you and then you're trying to, paint from that well you already got like the pinnacle right you're already to that moment of like voila you know and what we do so often in every practice session it seems like is we already know where we are how are we going to get back to it how are we going to slide out of it create some space and then give it to the people again and it's not necessarily verse chorus verse chorus repeat absolutely not Mm -hmm. i mean from the day we first started writing it was like well that's not a standard strong or song structure by any means (laughs) And I don't think we've had one yet that's been like a typical typical song structure. Like wait till the crowd cheers, then give them the refrain. 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the way it works, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I just know I that what know we either. do, <laughs> like even in the chaos that can be like a noise rock or something at times, there's still this groove, this underlying like, like trance-like groove to it that doesn't let you get pounded too hard. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, they're back. And we're going to do this again. And then it gets real loud and crazy. And then you're like, oh, wait, I'm grooving again. It's like this weird mushroom trip. I don't know. It's like, it's like you're in and out, you know? This sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's getting and, uh, better by the minute. I guess you brought the CD, Pig Pen. I, I forgot it. I had oh. to listen to it at home. <laughs> and I, forgot to, I, I forgot to pop it out of my CD player. Well, I, I, uh, I like uh, the riff bass behind what you guys do. And, and that's the consistency I picked up on it and uh that's why i want to bring up bradley green right now because the bass sound on that record is outstanding thank you i know uh, he would love to hear that that's a very solid part of what you guys do and it it brought back memories of bands like black sabbath where Mm -hmm. that really matters right right. without that bass and the old sabbath it wouldn't have been as heavy as you guys' yeah. record is sounding. I've always said right. that Brad definitely is playing under his ability with us because he is so talented. <laughs> yeah. in he so really many shines. Different ways. Yeah. Um, Brad is one of those guys that no matter what any of us are doing, he could make it better. But the fact that he doesn't mm-hmm. is part of his brilliance. Well, yes, so, exactly. yes exactly. so Sometimes yeah. there's overplaying, though, and sometimes sure. there's finding the, the pocket and staying in the pocket. And and I always look at it like a bit of a musical conversation. If if you're monopolizing the conversation with a, a bunch of notes, yeah, it might be really awesome, but give everybody else a chance to talk. No, and, you right. know, and, yeah, uh, no, and that's what it, you know. Sometimes you got to find the groove and lay back. And when it comes your turn to say a little something, you like, say. A little I would something. say instrumentally, you're spot on. He is definitely the Bradley rock in there. Is right in what he's talking about. He's yeah. laying down that heavy riff. Yeah, There's got, a fill here and there that's interesting. Yeah. But he's really making the heaviness of what you guys produced come out. Well, I mean, that's that was one of the biggest struggles and still is for us in our sound is to be able to clearly have as much low end as we have. Because right. we're all low end. It's all on the low. <laughs> baritone lows. guitar. It's yeah. baritone. Yeah. Right. It's, it's tuned right. down. It's, it's, it's difficult sonically to make that happen. And we yes. did spend a lot of time in the studio. Now, it's basically a live album in the studio, but the mixing itself was... Yeah, I actually have to long. take depth out of my vocals and push more highs to cut through. And luckily, we have Steve doing the same thing on his guitar. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, yeah, if, if everybody's in the same frequency area, exactly. it's going to get muddled. And a lot yeah. of people, <laughs> yeah. some musicians don't quite understand that. And yeah. you hear them, and it's like, okay, you're, you're, you're playing good, but everybody is coming at me muddy because the waves are, right. are, are, are mashing together. Exactly. And, and uh, when you learn to stay out of each other's frequencies, it's great. But when everybody's baritone, everybody's low, mm-hmm. it gets harder yeah. to, to keep it keep it clean yeah it's, so, it's been a challenge it's been, but it's been, a, it's been a fun challenge though because right. when it when it does work and you do get all everything set the way then it just works magically it's it's a powerful thing it yeah, really it's, is it's a powerful yeah. thing. it took us a while to get the guitars to, to like to be able to really mm-hmm. become independent of each other and like, mm-hmm. they've done a good job it does yeah you, it does absolutely man Brad comes from uh, tons. Of, I mean, you, I don't even think Brad could tell you how many bands he's been in. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, he couldn't even tell you how many bands he's probably currently in. Like, Overnight or Little know, Souls, but yeah, tons um, of yeah. great ones. Yeah, um, he's, from, he's, from the New, he's from New York. Okay, yeah, he's Maybe from New York, like New York, around Syracuse, I think. Yeah. Like Overnighter is one. Uh, Little okay. Souls is another one. Mm-hmm. Him and his wife Katie. Uh, and there's 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 a lot more, and I apologize. I don't he's remember uh, them all. He's fresh off a of solo release, two song solo release, oh, right? Yeah, Called uh, Grad Breen. Yeah, Grad Breen. Yeah, Grad yeah. Breen. Yeah, yeah. He releases a lot of a lot of material. Uh, yes, he does. he does. Yeah, he's a very creative uh, and very very smart musician. I and mean, possibly so we're very lucky to have him. Possibly a little bit less dexic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the sound of it, sopably. Now we only gets it. <laughs> we've covered everybody but Steve. Yeah, Steve Ricks. Uh, any bands we might recognize him from? Steve Hot Hand Ricks. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Camp. Uh, Camp Climax. Okay. Yeah. Girls was yeah. the, the name of the band. Yeah. Um, Your Dukes. Your Dukes. Okay. Yep. Guns and Navarro. Is that Those are the three big ones that I can remember. Uh, so yeah. he's he's local for sure. He's oh, local. he's definitely yeah. local. Yeah. Definitely seasoned for a long time. Long time. Yeah, he's really uh, he brings a really wonderful like riff rock flair to our darkness. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and uh, it is uh, it goes along with Brad's groove in its own way. You know, mm-hmm. like by itself, you might not think that it would go, but then when you hear it, that's sort of like it helped. That's one of those hooks. Yeah, like he's yeah. got that hook that gets in you. That's like, man, what is and, that? And you get Brad and Steve together. And a tornado happens, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Musically speaking, yeah. and everybody else is like trying to hold on. We're like, we're like <laughs> yep. Paxton and Twister with the strap. We're just like, where, where are they going to go with this? Uh, they get, they will go if you allow it. They will go. Yeah, just yeah. The cows <laughs> I mean, go so flying far by out and there. Crazy. Yeah. Just crazy. I mean, just as far as the, their abilities, their skill levels, the complete lack of care of time signatures, like that. Like that's the one thing as a, as a drummer, a wannabe drummer. I'll be like, well, what's the what's the time signature? And they're like, ah, oh, if you're counting, you're not feeling it, man. Like, and I'm like, just like you said earlier. So, but at some point, yeah. sometimes things have to be counted yeah. and dissected and put into organization, and that's what we. do. Well, it's hilarious because they're almost never on the same page counting or like where a lyric's supposed to drop or something. They never match up, but as soon as we say go, it just works. Yeah. I, I don't know what that magic sauce is, but they, they, yeah, yeah. They, they get it, man. Okay, based on what you just told me, you said you're the third drummer in the band. So I'm, I'm going to guess third, who the, the other Third best two, drummer, the original drummer, and the only drummer in this I'm going to guess who the other two are, just on what you just said. Bradley, <laughs> obviously, is one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. What do you think, Pigpen? Is it is it Steve or Chris? Because I already asked, I already asked uh, Jeremy if it was him. He denied it. I'm gonna go with Steve. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Tell Definitely. them what they want. Do we get a "Don't <laughs> Get Dead" T-shirt <laughs> or something? Or? We got some concert sure tickets for you. <laughs> concert tickets. Yeah, I bet they're for the uh, Red Flag show on September 15th with uh, the shirt I'm wearing, Kilvarez. Yeah. yeah. Rail yeah. Hazer. Yeah, that's and right. Miramont. Is Miramont. that how you say it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a newer, younger band that supposedly got some teeth to them. So we're looking forward to that one. Awesome. But yeah, uh, Robert, uh, Rob, Bob uh, over at Red Flag was generous enough. He gave every band a lot of tickets. And uh, we are uh, we just got them today. And, uh, we'll be handing them out. There's going to be some at Alton Mu- Music Exchange. Of some course. At, uh, Grand Paisa, mm-hmm. as well as, uh, I believe, Riverbend Records. So. Man, some you here guys. if you guys want some here. I mean, just yeah, keep absolutely. We will have yeah. some. We'll, we will leave some here at Put the station. The have you guys been to Red Flag? Yes, I, yes. Yeah, it's a good it's venue. Been a, it once. has been a while. Yeah, it's a fun venue to play. I got to, to play. see Haken there, and I thoroughly loved Haken. Yeah, mm-hmm. the sound there, both on stage and front of house, is absolutely tremendous. They do a really good job. Yeah, the place reminds me a little bit of Mississippi Nights. Not in like the size the layout, and the scale, but the yeah. layout is very pop. much so like pops yeah, a little bit of pops, similar yeah. kind of setup, I think. Yeah, yeah, but it's good. Except I love it. There's no strippers. No, <laughs> coming over from the no. strip club. No. no, there are random people on the street well, that take the their eye. clothes off, though. <laughs> 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 it is that part of town. Right? Uh, <laughs> I like yeah. to get fancy and go over to Fountains on Locus before and after. Yeah, right. It's always good. Get a martini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more interested in the uh, September 1st show at CBGB's. I, I hear the club's been there for a while, but it's just coming onto my radar. So. so so the question I put out about CBGB's is, do you play country, bluegrass, or blues? <laughs> it has to be all at the same yeah, time. All the same okay. time. Yeah. 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 That's the only way to do yeah. it. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> the place is small, but it's, it's super fun. Does anybody know how it works? I mean, the name? I mean, I first heard the name. I was like... Is that, it like a franchise so, now? So like, what is this? Yeah, like the, the original CBGBs was stood for country, yeah. bluegrass, and blues, and I'm assuming that they're just riding the coattails, riding right? the coattails. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's a franchise or what, but it's the same idea. It's the same thing. It's like this tiny little shotgun room next to another one, and one's the bar, and then one is like shuffleboard and right. a makeshift stage. And like, if you've got more than four people, which we do, we're a five piece. It's like you've got a stack. From front to back, <laughs> you're not going to be sideways. It's 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 uh, narrow, it but it's it's but fun. It's going to be us, Gigi Allen, the Ramones. It's going to be us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, just, you know. well Gigi kind of was a big sloth. He was kind of a big. He sloth. was kind of a big sloth. His brother is still a b- big sloth. Right. Yeah. 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 Murder, yeah, murder, yeah. Junkies. murder junkies. Now Merle? the, the yeah. other one, I'm not sure if I can even say it right. Consensia Total. Is yeah, it, they are a. Sp- uh, like an all Spanish speaking like hardcore nice. punk band, which I love out of I, Chicago. I love Spanish infused, yeah, Latin so I'm used especially with Spanish. Uh, yeah, I love it. So they go on first, then us, and then Big Sloth from Iowa. Okay, yeah, 
And that's September 1st at CBGB in St. Louis. Where about in St. Louis? South Grand. Okay. Yep, South Grand, right down where you think it would be. Not too far from Cheap Tricks and that whole area. Yep. That's right. a good place. There's Rick a- Nielsen's place? <laughs> Cheap Trick? Cheap Trick. Yes. Okay. That, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Hope There's we bring some guitar. <laughs> a, pretty, a pretty big budding heavy rock scene going on in st louis yeah, yeah something's like, happening right now where yeah. music is really like uh i was afraid it was gone after covid well the, it was but yeah, it well, it's coming back the music was different though i mean there wasn't there was less heavy stuff before covid well i, I think there's a lot of americana of a lot of kind of indie rock, i think some of the of angst that. started coming back the genuine angst that it takes to make the music that that we find ourselves in yeah. well right, i think you, you you pointed it out on the record very well Right, the thing you just mentioned that I hate to mention that happened, <laughs> that thing was like a wildfire or yeah, a flat man. tire. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was definitely a pretty liar for a little while. Till it passes <laughs> by. And, yeah. Just, and now that it's passed yeah. by, everyone knows what they missed. Yeah, man. The first big show I went to after the that whole thing was a, a Circle Jerks reunion show at Red Flag, and I was up Always in the balcony the watching. Guy. Oh, well, yeah, I forgot the loaf of bread, but I did show up. So, you know, I'm, I'm watching uh, these guys do their thing on stage, and I, had a, I literally had a, a, this tear in my eye thinking, oh, thank God, yeah. we can still do this. Like, and the place was packed, you know. Yeah. Um, half the people had masks on, whatever, whatever your thing is. The important thing for me was it was live music. And I got to pay a few yeah. bucks to support them, and they let us come in and see it. I went, I went to drive-in shows during 2020. Where, yeah. it, and I tell you, it, it it was odd, and it took a huge PA to make it happen. So it was not never any small shows, obviously, but it was the greatest thing because you pull up and you got your car, and you got a spot next to you to sit all your, you know, your 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 chairs, but all your stuff's there. Yeah. Like your cooler, your food, <laughs> right. like, awesome. extra clothes. You know, it's like, oh, it's getting chilly tonight. I think I'll grab another shirt. Right. <laughs> yeah, know? that's a good like thing, a man. It, it was really awesome to, like, have my car in the sh- like, sitting next to me at the show. It's like, huh. I didn't have to forget anything. That's the same reason <laughs> nobody goes to the movie theater anymore. You can do it at home, man. Right. You know? <laughs> like in your in your jockeys and your popcorn, man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk more about the new record and the shows. Uh, but let's do a little bit of what's going on this weekend around yeah. the River Bend uh, because it's Coolaverse Culture Night right oh, next door to oh, the Alton yeah. Exchange, yeah. right? Yeah, man. Mike was in today. Oh, yeah. I was talking to, to Mike. and What a great dude. Mr. Schneider is the... Yeah. Mayor of Alton, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that that was good stuff. So that starts at 6, goes to 1140 at the uh, conservatory on Friday night, and that's uh, once a month now, which is pretty cool. Hideous mm-hmm. gentlemen do a once a month Yeah, we thing do every too. third Friday, and uh, Mike does Cool Verse every fourth Friday. Right. There's a fifth Friday, they usually take it off. Aaron Joe does the second Friday. Right. Aaron Joe and Co. And then. Uh, Darius does the right. one man Grateful uh, Grateful Dead jam band the yeah. first Friday. So, yeah, right. it's pretty awesome. And he's uh, getting it together this weekend. We'll get to that in just a minute. Of course, they have the pianos down at Raging Cajun. They're uh, canceling the buzz tones down at Flock for good reason on a Friday. The intrusion will be at the VFW from 7 to 11. Interesting place for the intrusion. Uh, Flip the Frog at Baker's and Hale in Godfrey on Friday night from 7 to 11. Scott and Michelle at the Moose in Wood River from 7 to 10. Dave Horton out at the Holiday Shores Marina Bar from 7 to 10. It'll be the classic rock experience at the Wild E Theater in Edwardsville at 8 o'clock. we got Burning Bridges at the 1818 Chop House in Edwardsville. Mike Sonderreger at the Cabin at Judy Creek in Glen Carbon. Harvest Drive down at Deutz in Pontoon Beach. There's your buddy's lickety split pick, man. <laughs> 9 p.m. at Patrick's. That's the name of a strip Trent. club, right? Yeah. Or one of the strippers that comes over to the pop shows. Right. <laughs> Lickety Splits. That's a good name for a band. I like it. They're Patrick's. We'll down see in if uh, City. we'll see if Drew Schaefer and friends do it at the outdoor venue at the old Harold Brewery in old Collinsville. Drew, I haven't right? heard that in a while. Yeah. Yacht Rockers, maybe at the loading dock in Grafton. Uh, Matt Tall, probably at the uh, Bloody Bucket Saloon from 7 to 10. I believe that one's indoors. He still won't take a break. He'll just He'll play, just play straight just through. Straight he through. will. He straight not. through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to stop and, you know, take a break. No too time. many songs. Too, too many, many songs. songs. We got Bob Gilda listed at Aries Winery. That one could be indoor or outdoor right. at Aries from 3 to 7. Anita Michelle Jackson doing a thing called 
Midwest Salute to the Arts at Moody Park in Fairview Heights. Interesting little fest- right. festival there. And the Blue Marlin Band in O'Fallon this weekend. Jay Christopher up at Canton Inn uh, on a Friday night. So uh, more going on. But, uh, we'll just move on to Saturday because we got so much to uh, cover here. And uh, most of the other stuff a little bit farther away. So you can check that all out at cottonmouth.org. The town crier is going to be at the... Uh, brown bag beaster on saturday because it's cooling off by saturday and we're going to make that happen by manifesting it and saying it is going to cool off saturday. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So, yes it is so that's five to eight the the brown bag beats throw another venue on broadway right here in alton three of a perfect pair they're going to be doing the flock food truck in alton right there on broadway and here he is darius spangler and lonesome oh, blues yeah. 7 30 at the lodge at lovejoy in alton they should be able to do the uh, wonderful outdoor uh, spot they have at the Lodge at Lovejoy. And next door to the Alton Music Exchange on Saturday night, Astro Fix at 8 o'clock at the Conservatory is what they have listed on their website. All right. And uh, let's see. There's this thing called a food truck festival. So I don't know. Flip the Frog, maybe? Uh, the huh? amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. And uh, let's see, what else? Naked Soul Generation X at Fast Eddie's, Fiction Drive at Third Shoot and Alton Stubblefield. Oh, look at that. Our sponsor, Matt Van Voorst, takes Town Club and the Stubblefield Band out to Bakers and Hale from 7 to 11. <laughs> He'll probably stop by Hal for Music, and he may run into Porch Cafe there, who are going to be playing at uh, Roper's <laughs> Regal Beagle in Godfrey from 7 to 11. Uh, infringement down at the Pup House in Wood River. Michael 20 down at Martin's Tunes and Eats, which is for sale from 2 to 5. Uh, Leadfoot up at the Hog Pit. Uh, 4 o'clock, Tanglefoot at the Loading Dock. 5 to 8, Trag Band at the Grafton Winery Brew House. Cherry Bomb, 2 to 6, Showdown 7 to 11 at the Grafton Pub. Dave King and Graham Pagano doing Aries uh, Resort in Grafton. Dave King at noon, Graham at 3. Catfish Willie. <laughs> the Bloody Bucket Saloon, 7 to 10. Exit 52 at the uh, Oyster Bar in Grafton. SIUE is going to take care of the whole college. Is going to take care of 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Ghost of Market and Market. <laughs> wait, know how what? they're going to handle it. Parking's going to be fierce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? <laughs> I, only, I only say what's listed. I mean, <laughs> it confused right. me, All too. Right. But, yeah. right. Crystal you. Lady, 9 o'clock at the Back Bar in Edwardsville. Uh, Dustin Coleman, 2 to 5. And Meatwood Flax, 6 to 9 at Big Daddy's 15th <laughs> anniversary in Edwardsville. So uh, that going on Saturday. Butch Moore. 5 to 9 at Butch. Viva La Fiesta in Edwardsville. And when I see Butch Moore's name, I think it's a stagger in. And, and something I meant to mention last week, and I hate to bring down such a high note, but uh, rest in peace, Mr. Uh, Dana Michael Anderson. Unfortunate He's to hear there. that he passed away. Oh. Uh, yeah. But he was a stagger in regular. Big loss. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, he has a <clears throat> dear friend for 17 years, man. Yeah. Chasing that guy, just chasing him, trying to be as good as him. He's just too damn good. Yeah. And sad yeah. news there. A lot of people so. felt that one. Wanted to uh, mention it this week. Uh, we kind of flew past it last week, uh, so I wanted to definitely put it out there and our yeah. thoughts. They, and it, I know I did hear um, November 25th they will be doing a celebration. Okay. Uh, that's that's the latest I heard. His brother JB mentioned it. Uh, still a ways off, a lot of planning. It's, there'll be a lot of people there. I'm not sure where they're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it'd we'll, be a big uh, crowd. It'd be a big crowd. Yeah, we'll wait and see how that all pans out. But sad to hear that Dana yeah. Anderson passing away. Darian Rowe will be at a Global Brew from seven to ten in Edwardsville on Saturday. Strings and Keys out in Maryville at Lyle's Tavern eight o'clock until eleven. Drew Lance and J.D. Hughes three to six and Sweet Bottom seven to eleven at the Cabin at Judy Sweet Creek. Bottom. Lickety <laughs> Split, night number two down at Patrick's at oh, nine o'clock. Oh. Southside Bluesy Boys seven o'clock at Tegan's Pub in Granite City. And kick ass, 8.30. <laughs> right. What are we going to call our band? It's named I don't after, know. I think we're pretty kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly named after a superhero. Who knows? K.A. Yeah. 8.30 <laughs> at uh, Boyd's Village Inn in Pontoon Beach. Uh, so that ought to be exciting. Tailgaters down at Old Harold Brewery in Collinsville. And that, and, could, and that price ticket price for is free to $75. Right, yeah. So there's a lot of range in there. Definitely. Uh, how much you want to spend that night. And then uh, Money Shot, <laughs> 4 to 8 at the Prairie Inn in Dorsey. And uh, day number two of the Midwest Salute to the Arts in Moody Park in Fairview Heights. 
Lanny and Julie started at 10. Oh, nice. Scruffy looking nerf herder at noon. <laughs> Dusty uh, James and Abalone Pearl, 145. Todd Carrier, 345 to 5. Sweetie and the Toothaches, 530 to 8. Over there at the uh, Midwest Salutes to the Arts in Moody Park and Fairview Heights. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, most of the rest of them uh, a little further out. Oh, we got close quarters playing, huh? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you want to talk about uh, no. Mark Close? And, no. Uh, I, 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 the things I know about Mark, I can't say on okay. the air. Okay. It's very, very <laughs> personal. <laughs> right. Lane Narrows also. Yeah. With guest Jimmy Griffith. And that's at the... Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen Jimmy for years, but he's a heck of a guy, too. That's at the uh, Lincoln Theater in Belle Belle. But all yeah. those uh, available and more at cottonmouth.org, including Jake Houlihan, 2 to 6 at the Long Shot Tiki Bar across the river. Portage to Sue. That's right. We're talking to Don't Get Dead tonight. Brand new uh, EP, six song release. We covered uh, Wildfire a little bit. We covered Paper Thin a little bit. I brought up Giants. I'll try to figure it out. <laughs> Don't freak out. All right. I'll stay over here. Okay. I was hoping you'd take over. <laughs> where there's a will? Yeah, there's a way. That's right. Yeah, that's where you'll stay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That's uh that's an interesting song for me. I really like that song. Yes, we love that. I think that's probably like a at least a number one or two for most of us. There's for me lyrically to be able to write that was really good. That's like a well, I, I consider that like how that was first on the album is sort of a Tarantino way of writing a film where you show the ending first okay. and then you progressively show how you got there afterwards because that song for me at least lyrically is about like uh, overcoming things as an adult as a father as a military guy it's like all the things all the different hats that we wear just overcoming it and realizing that all the finger pointing and all the shouting and yelling for years was really just so I could hear it and see it and uh, it's sort of a triumphant, like a victory thing for me, at least lyrically. So I really enjoy that one a lot. Yeah, the speed in which Jeremy comes up with or, or has something ready to go, is, is it's pretty amazing. I can spend forever trying to write lyrics or something not good. <laughs> I mean, he just, it just really is just, you know, by the time we're riffing on something and he's either pulling up something, hey, this will fit, this is perfect, this is what I want, I'm working on this. It's where that lightning hits, man. It's like, oh my gosh, I wrote something for this seven years ago, and it yeah. fits perfect. Yeah. And that's when I go, oh, that shit, sorry, that stuff wasn't done to me. It was done for me, mm -hmm. for this moment right yeah. here. And I don't want to get too esoteric about it, but I believe in that. I believe that, that all of this is like perfectly timed, and that's why it's great that we just sort of chug along, and we've been doing this for years now. And you know, Yeah, I mean, it, really, it has been... It's been over two years. Over two years. I mean, we just, it's been in the basement for, for a long time. We were real deliberate and slow and learning what we want to do, figure out what we want to do. Yeah. There's no hurry to get it out there because it's not about getting it out mm -hmm. there. It's about doing it. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the fun that you have yeah, along the way getting to wherever yeah. you end if up. You're not getting off on the journey, man. You're not, you're you're missing, not on the right you're train, man. Yeah. Yeah. The moment you start yeah. forcing it, like forcing, it's like that song, like where there's a will, that's where you'll stay, right? And the next line is, I had a will and that's where I laid, was in it. Like nothing came of my will because with music, I believe firmly as in art or as with art, it's not yours. It's gifted to you. And if you can translate it and put it out there yeah. for people to, to appreciate and pull from, then you win. Yeah, and yeah, that's and, all there and, is to and it. And once you put it out there, it's it's not yours. It's, it's not. You. It's not so, yours anymore. So, so Neil Young said, uh, I saw in an interview where he said he didn't write anything. Right. He heard it and wrote it down and didn't edit it. He's yeah. Like, I, I refused to edit it because it wasn't even mine. I heard it from somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My uh, my guitar coach is a local native uh, from Dazzling Kilman, a guy named Darren Gray. Mm -hmm. And Darren told me once, uh, we meet every week. Thankfully, he's such a, a great human for me. He said. It's not ours. We borrow it. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like energy, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. And that's exactly what he was likening it to. It was like, and if you pass it up, that's on you. But don't be mad when somebody else says and yeah. does that same thing because right. you didn't grab it. You yeah. Didn't, you didn't take it and run with it. Well, and, and like you say, once you once you put it out there, it's no longer yours mm -hmm. either. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, when I got to uh, meet the Grateful Dead, I'm just talking to him, and I, I, I was talking to Bobby Weir, and I said, hey, how did the record labels feel about you giving you guys money to make a record and now you play it and let people record it for free at the shows? Mm -hmm. And he said it didn't matter what the record company thought. Jerry said, 
the kids need the music. If we give them the music for free, they'll buy enough T-shirts for us to eat. You're right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's beautiful. You know, and, and the, the kids need the music. It's what it's all about. So, so. Many, so many bands out there right now are making a living off merchandise and branding and all this stuff. I mean, I think yeah. there, there are ways to make a living off of music now. It, it doesn't necessarily look like what it looked in the 70s or 80s, and that's yeah. what so much of what we do – is compared to mm-hmm. and yeah. so many so many people just need to figure it out where it's like there's look it's a different world we live in it's a different yeah. way of of being an artist um but also a level of being a company or a being i mean being professional sure. you yeah know? Absolutely. yeah yeah well if you yeah you've got to put that best foot forward that if something does spark you're prepared for it like you have to be ready you have to have done the work so that yeah. when that lightning hits, you're prepared nice. to use the tools you have. The vision you know? comes to the prepared mind. That's right. Mm-hmm. If, if you That's see right. the vision, but your mind's not prepared, you don't even understand the vision. No, you don't. You don't even get you it. You just thought oh, that was a weird dream. And that's something where, like, what, what I've experienced in my, I will call it a very young journey doing this. I'm very thankful to be here. I've had people approach me after the show in tears because the words that I was, that I was saying was theirs. Yeah, it was their experience. Their story. Yeah, and I remember like uh, I used to run whether it was in the military or after. I'd have a, a playlist going, and this song it was just like somebody was watching me, and they were in my head, and I'm thinking, how in the world is this happening? Am I going insane? No, that was mine to hear in that moment. Right, and it's to be able to experience that from the other end now is robbed, staggering. Yeah. to say the least. When somebody says something like that, it's like such a weird form of validation. That I don't look externally for validation, but when it hits, it's rewarding, man. It's definitely different. I mean, hideous, hideous gentlemen can go up there, and we can play for three hours, and I, I'm doing a different role, and it's and it's a different style of music. And we'll play for three or four hour sets or whatever, and by the end of it, you're good and wore out and tired and everything. But we'll we'll play for thirty minutes, and I'm just spent. I mean, a hundred percent. And it's not just the fact that I'm physically moving, playing okay. drums. Like there's an energy there that everybody's given away. Right. It doesn't leave anything for it's you. It's a by dump, the end. man. I mean, you're just you're just yeah. spent. It's there's an adrenaline left, dump. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. When we get off there, it, for some reason, it like every one of us is just let it out. Yeah. And you may not even see the act of letting it out. Like he said, like mm-hmm. he's, he's back there playing drums. Yeah. But the energy that we're releasing to people is, it's really, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's really it's, heavy. Yeah. yeah. It's the one main thing that I miss since I stopped doing it was that release of all the tension and buildup mm-hmm. yeah. that I would let out. In yeah. practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just And people can feel that. And they know when it's genuine or when it's contrived. Yeah. They can feel it. And the ones that feel it will come back again and again because it it, it because they know. They need that too. It's a release for them too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, you, you said someone came up to you in tears after a show I, i've had that happen to me too oh, it's yeah. like they're they're crying going can you please never do this again why why would you put us through this <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's what idiots do that's that's what well, i've had that happen so many times yeah Just the, it's something the one i remember was a, a young man walked up to me after a show and he goes did your parents beat you too and i was like oh man my life's not as bad as yours here dude. we go I mean, dude you know what i mean yeah it's well, like, but it, if that helped you, I'm glad. I'm, yeah, I, but yeah. I got to admit, man, I mean, you got it worse than I do, but you touch people. You well, know the I mean? thing is, like, what I've realized, like, I come from a pretty tumultuous and really sort of a gross adolescent life and a lot of loss in the military. But now I look at it through a lens of gratitude, and I realize that my steaming heap of dung that I was standing on is no different than somebody else's because they all spark the same emotion. So, like, people may think, well, you had it worse or not as bad as me or whatever. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you can convey, process, and tell the story of the emotion. And that's what sparks in somebody else is, hey, how did you deal with that emotion, that rage or that depression or that that manic state of energy or whatever it is, the anxiety? And to be able to say that it's possible to overcome that and then look back at it and say, oh, that was just on-the-job training. That was preparation for right. today because I needed to know how to be in the suck for a while. And so I went in the suck for a while. But if on the other side of that, all you do is dwell in it, you're never utilizing that tool that you have in your belt, right? Yeah. So I think that's what resonates with people is realizing that like, oh my goodness, somebody else is telling my story and they're doing it in a way 
that is not like pointing a finger or being angry, right? Mm-hmm. It's more of like, hey, listen, this is just what I went through. Uh, high five, move on, what's next? Yeah, we may be loud and aggressive, but it's not angry. I mean, not, no. It's really not angry. No, not at all. I mean, I, I really think live, when it comes to live bands, the su- successful ones, it really is the, gr- the, the group of people on stage, however many guys or gals are in the band, and everybody really is locked in together and clicked in together mentally, physically when you're playing. And that's when that's when the energy sparks and it goes up and it goes to the audience and then it can come back. Yeah. And I've been in so many bands and, and played so many different groups and songs and, and it's it's real clear when it's not clicking with the band it's not going to click for the audience i don't care if Mm-mm. you got one or two people Mm-mm. up there who are super talented no it's not going to happen they Some call just, it chemistry yeah you know yeah but, but it's i call it the group mind when the group mm-hmm. mind is in effect we all can feel where we're going mm-hmm. with this song yeah. and, and we can feel the changes coming up even though we never talked about it yeah it's about to happen well if you pull that pendulum back right like that steel ball and, and you don't let it drop, the other side's not going to go out, and it's not going to come back. And yeah. I think what we do is we pull it way back, and we let it go, and then we wait on that audience to just bring it right back to us. Man. And then we do it again, and then yeah. they do it. And yeah. it's this perfect give and take, this yin and yang. The audience has been great the last batch of shows. Yes, they have. Extremely good. It's yeah. interesting that you tie angry to loud, which is well, right. interpreted that way a lot, mm-hmm. but a lot of the times it's just frustration. It's not anger. No. Frustrated at things, yeah, and, and just venting that. You know, uh, you know. I think we're going down. Yeah, man, and I, I like, like it, it. Right? <laughs> I think we're gonna <laughs> gonna drown. Drown. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. excited. Yeah. yeah, and that speaks to like the dying of your old self and the acceptance of the new self. That's that right. really does speak to like get rid of that old stuff that was holding me down. Spare parts, but don't get dead. Yeah. That might have been the first. That might have been the first song, huh? Uh, Spare parts. I think that was the, the first record, one that we really first, put together and yeah, completed. We're riffing for a bit here and there, and that one where it was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. we can we can lock this into something. We can do something with it. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was fun, man. Yeah, I think we've turned to rust. There's not that much left of us. Like, right. that's, yeah, man, that's <laughs> not. It's fun stuff, but it is like it's not angry, because if you if you if you do this and you perform it with anger you don't get love back yeah and that's i mean it's funny to say that i think being here you know uh the just who we are and how people might view us and they hear us maybe and they don't know us it's not anger not at all it's love it's acceptance it's a lot of fun yeah yeah it's storytelling right right that's it story i think you i think you summed up with frustration i mean there can be i mean who doesn't get frustrated right Yeah, you can't make it through a day without a little frustration. Right, that's but that, part of being a human. But without frustration or resistance, you have no growth or no right. excitement. Right, right. Yeah. That's what you build off of. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. no polarity. Without polarity, no negative. There's no positive. Without right? the good, yeah, without the the bad part of the song, you wouldn't even notice the good part of the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, exactly. Yeah, I think it was a Kevin Smith film. They said without the sweet, there's or without the sour, there's never so you know it can't yeah. be so sweet or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely, it holds man. true. Well, Jeremy Allen Stanton, lyrics for "Don't Get Dead." Yes, sir. You got a lot to tell us. Yeah. On that new release, yeah. you sure do. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Yeah, so and, much. And my to favorite say. line of all time. Really? The first one that caught, the uh, first time through, the one that just jumped out was, I'm losing my stomach. It's a wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> and the song Blackout. I don't know why that jumped out at me, but I heard that and like immediately like looked at the uh, computer like that's going to matter that you're, you ever look at the record while you're listening <laughs> yeah, to right. it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it trying to say to me? Moment, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me stare at a picture of the cover. Am I on the Truman Show? What's it's going gonna, on? It's yeah, going to help, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's true, man. I look back and uh, it, through a lot of times of like, just hang on, man. Yeah, hold like, on, I mean, baby. It, just hang on. Like, I had yeah. some dark moments in my life, man, real dark. And uh, yeah, that gives me a great way to talk about it. And so you got physical copies down at Alton Music Exchange? Of yeah, the new phys- yeah, physical CDs. You can find it on currently on all the platforms. All the streaming right? platforms. Yeah, yep, vinyls Spotify. are in the works. We did. Uh, Jeremy actually gifted. Uh, everybody, a uh, vinyl nice. in the band when we did it. It's awesome. It's red, super cool. Yeah, um, uh, actually, Don Bailey did that. Don Bailey did over that. Over at Big Finger. Oh, Big Finger Records, Records. yeah. Yep. Nice. Yep. And um, hopefully, in the near six months, we'll be getting vinyl. Apparently, it takes like six months to get vinyl. Right. Apparently, it takes a long time. Yeah. But we do want to do a batch of 
of vinyls. Yeah, working on a couple of videos right now. Yep. yep. Nice. Yep, a couple of videos, one montage style with some live stuff, and then another live style video. Uh, yeah, one of them we're going to be featuring a local uh, local young skateboarder in. Nice. Very talented young man that just sort of fits the mold of the music right. and the era, you know. It's nice <laughs> to bring something like that into it. Don't Get Dead on Facebook. Yeah. yeah, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, all of them. I'm not in charge of any of that stuff. But okay. Yeah, Brad and I sort of take care of that. Just for the folks that are trying to find it. Yeah, yeah. You That's can always nice. just go down to Alt Music Exchange and ask Jared about it. Come down, come down, and talk about it. I'll talk to you off all day about it. <laughs> <laughs> I got the gift of gab. And, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. and about all the uh, area bands, because you got merch from everybody down there. We do. We have merch from so many local bands. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's all there, all all of the uh, and for a few, you know bands that would want to do merch, we don't take any consignment from it. It's just a place to sell your stuff. So if nice. you got T-shirts, you got CDs. Let me tell you, CDs really fly off the shelf. No, yeah. <laughs> people don't have CD players, but T-shirts, bring them I down. Do. Every yeah. every penny goes back to you. We try to really push it, um, help out, support local music. Yeah. Uh, yep. Man, uh, there you go. at your release party, first time I'd ever heard the Mercs. What a band that oh, What is. a band. Hey, they what a pleasure. Huh? And apparently they've been around yeah, a yeah. Long I time. Was, for a while. I was shocked <laughs> long time. to hear they'd been around since the 80s. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, I talked to him during your set, so I missed quite a bit of your set. <laughs> <laughs> they were that good. good. I don't blame They them. were that yeah. good. That was yeah. the second time we played with them. Uh, just unbelievable. And it was the band I didn't know. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, they'd never played over here before. And yeah. they gave me a CD, and I listened to that thing for about two weeks straight yeah. in my car. Yeah. I couldn't take it that's out. That's how. That's how exactly how I listen to music. I put yeah. that on, and yep. I can leave it on all week. It's like last week. week when I told you I was streaming your your uh, mm-hmm. release on YouTube. I've listened to it every day since then. Yeah, just to get it totally burnt into my that's system. Exactly and how I listen really to music, know it to try to yeah. hear it the way that as close as possible to the way they heard it when they were making this. Mm-hmm baby for you you know right? yeah this, this, this yeah and that was the first release for the mercs too they've yeah. been around forever and that was their first yeah. release wow talk been, about a slow roll yeah. been in a lot of different <laughs> a lot of different bands over the years but and they've always known each other and they played yeah. in bands together but yeah. as the mercs yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, really good release stuff. though i guess you got a copy of that down there probably um, they did not give me oh, one. Oh man like, yeah, that's my own rule if you bring cds down i get one okay because i'm the only guy i swear i might be the only guy i still have a cd book so we'll have to uh, just a level come in the other day we'll uh, from the conservatory and i'm flipping through the book looking for a cd he's like wow one actually out in the wild <laughs> like it is so <laughs> rare and i'm still i still got my book of cds uh, yeah. i got i have so many local bands i've got so oh. many burnt you know yeah. just just yeah you know because i tend to listen to music to people that i know personally like i yeah. i am drawn so much to music that I, people i've known i've met i'm just i'm i'm all in now because i know the person right, right? Nice. Yeah. yeah i love listening i mean but all all the hits that from music. all the solo stuff you all grew up music, with, know yeah. it all. I love it all, but I do really appreciate it if I know someone in the group. Do you listen yeah. to your own album though? And is that weird? Only, only when I'm going back in the studio for the next round. Right. For for well, I want to hear where I'm coming from. Really, right. I tend to want to avoid that, hmm. and I'll get I'll get inspiration by I'll listening to it, but I don't typically listen. to to yeah, anything yeah. I do. Yeah, I get that totally. By the end of it, by the end, by the time you write the thing, yeah. record the thing, promote it for a year, I'm yeah, kind of done with it. Yeah, yeah. move you on. You know, as a, as a, as a recorded piece. Is it weird that I still listen to our album like as if it's not even ours? Well, nah. you're a youngin. I, yeah, it's probably <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of times it's painful. I mean, I've, I've you know, Hide- I agree. Hideous has put out five or six albums now. I've, I put out albums with other bands, and you can go back and hear stuff and go. Oh my God! Like well, I can't believe I put that out. Like that's bad, sure. you know. Like so many, oh, so yeah. I put out, you know, yeah. like twenty plus years I've been putting out music. I don't know, maybe Close to it anyway. I don't know. I've yet to find a sore spot in that album. It's great. Album. Well, I mean, it is a really good album. Thank yeah. you, that's and I don't mean that like to say that. Like, no, no, I mean, no. I mean that like <laughs> like musically. I didn't play the instruments. I just you know yeah. did the vocal well, thing. So but. so we've talked about it before. What usually almost every time you make a recording, when you finish it, it's the best one you ever made. Yeah, it's new to you. Right, mm-hmm. the material's new. It's the newest thing, and it's better recording probably mm-hmm. than the last time. You know, it's always like that. Where when you do a new recording, you're like, "This is the best ever." Absolutely. But then you know, a couple years down the road, you're like, 
God, I keep hearing myself take that deep breath in there. Why didn't? <laughs> why, why? Right. It just yeah. sounds so stupid. When I'm like, right. and then <gasps> yeah. I'm gonna go on. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, we recorded at Lighthouse uh, with Caleb. Just absolutely great yeah. studio. Caleb is awesome. He, yeah. he, I've worked with him the last four recording projects. Like he's my guy. He's just the best. Uh, and not even necessarily into the same kind of music. It's not. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even come from that realm. But he's the kind of guy where. It doesn't matter. Like, we're working on making this right now. We all have inspiration from all kinds of different places. I mean, I'll play bluegrass in the morning and, and do metal at night. Yeah. That's just, I like yeah. all kinds of music. I listen to hip hop all day today. Um, yeah. When it, and Caleb's kind of the same way. You know, he just sipping on gin and juice. It, that was on there. He was that very was patient there. with us. <laughs> it was an OG mixtape. I, I, I can see it in your eyes. I'm like, he listened to gin and juice today, man. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, don't get dead for yeah. uh, stopping by. Thanks for having me. And uh, everybody, check them out on all the streaming platforms. Check them out on Facebook and all the social media. Stop by Alton Music Exchange. And uh, talk to Jared. Go down on the corner and uh, see Chris down at the uh, tattoo shop. And uh, it's all right there within a block, uh, right around the conservatory. So uh, have a nice uh, visit to Alton while you're here. And uh, uh, congratulations on the new release, guys. And uh, I think it sounds outstanding, and people need to get out there and check it out, you know. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, no problem. And uh, thanks for uh, stopping in. And don't forget to check them out September 1st over in St. Louis at CBGB's with uh, Big Sloth and Conceit. I messed it up that time. Consensia Total. Also <laughs> September 15th with Kilvarez, Rail Hazer, and Maramont. I was going to point out one thing about being in radio. We get given a lot of merch. <laughs> like, but I don't have a don't get dead. We, I, uh, we'll I make it up to you. We'll, we'll make it we'll up, make up to you. We got two. You do what, have a killer V-neck. Yeah. You got to get him v- a V-neck. I'll take we got scissors. Sli- we got scissors. <laughs> we got a sleeveless. <laughs> <laughs> we got a sleeveless guy in our band too. He, uh, Cut it just like dancing. Cut it just like dancing. Just straight down. Deeper to V, the gayer they be. Oh boy! Mine goes down to my belly button like the '70s. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all that hamburger meat, all We'll make sure you guys get taken. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get to hey, that. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much to the guys from Don't Get Dead again. Get out to see them uh, September first, September fifteenth. There's tickets available for the September fifteenth. You can stop by the Music Exchange. Mm-hmm. Stop by uh, down here at the station. They're going to have mm-hmm. some. Stop so by Riverbend Records. Stop well, by yeah. Riverbend Records. There you go. Tattoo get, shop. Tat- yep. Yep. There you go. Yep. We'll have them. Uh, big thanks to these guys. Uh, great job on the CD. And also thanks to our sponsors, right. Alpen Music Good. and Matt Van Voorhees. Check him out uh, with the Stubblefield Band out of there Baker's and Hale this weekend. And everybody else, remember, get out and support local music and art.